We've been doing a series called Strength for the Journey. Strength for the Journey. Amen? Hallelujah. And I'm excited today as we get right on into it. If you need uh, an outline of what we're going to do, go ahead and take a picture of the link right there, and you're going to get a digital outline. And we can go ahead and show that on those for those at home as well. Praise God. Put that up there. So I want y'all to be able to follow along with our teaching. Young, old, everybody get a picture of this. Amen. We're going to be talking about the Holy Spirit. Everybody said the Holy Spirit. Amen. Notice I didn't say unholy. I said holy. Amen. We're living in a time and a season where of heaviness. So many people are heavy, depressed, anxious. Are you with me? How many know Jesus came to break your heaviness? Jesus came to deliver you of your anxiety. Jesus came, guess what, to let you know that everything is going to be all right. That's the good news. Some people think it's just about hell. No, it's about heaven. Amen. <laughs> it's about that he's saving you and saving us. Hell wasn't built for us. Amen. It was built for Satan and his demons. But God has a heaven for his people. Amen. And he's ordained you to be a part of it. And how many know that we're on this journey of life? Everybody say journey. Say, I need strength. I need God's strength for the journey. Say, I need strength. I need God's strength for the journey. Amen. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 6, be strong in the Lord and in the power of of his might. And we're living in an age where everybody else is, wants to be strong, but we don't want to be strong in the Lord. We want to be strong in spiritualism. We want to be strong in new age. We want to be strong in the king's principles. Who's the king? Jesus Christ. We want the king's principles without the king. We want to say everything's going to work out all right, but we don't want to give God the credit for it. The Bible says, all things are going to work together for my good in Romans chapter 8, because I love the Lord Jesus Christ, and I am called according to his purposes. See, but we want to just leave the Jesus Christ out, because that offends people. We don't want to offend people. But how many know when you cut people off from the source of the wisdom, are you with me? They never get to get it for themselves because I'm not the source. He's the source. Are y'all with me? Amen. Amen, light bulb. Amen, chair. Amen. So, as, as usual, we're going to stand up and read our scriptures. Amen. And then after that, you're going to sit down for the rest of the service to the altar call or end of prayer. And I'm going to stand up and do the heavy lifting. Amen. So hopefully I'm glad. Good to see the Starks family in the house. Let's give them a hand clap. Yeah, yeah. Daniel, Jacob, Lindsay, Mario, Nicole. I remember when they were, man, at the, at the rental place. And now you're here. Amen. Praise God. Just, uh, it's awesome. And uh, how's Justin doing? Doing good? Okay. Amen. Amen. Are y'all ready to read the Word? My tablet's trying to freeze up on me. Of course it would. You're going to get it. Uh, 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 oh. If you said it, I believe it. You're a man. There we go. Thank you, Lord. Here we go. Are we ready? Turn your name to neighbor. Are you ready? Wake up. God is good. Amen. Some of y'all... Amen. Amen. I'm not going to point anybody out. Here we go. Y'all ready to read? Let's read. The Great Commission. It says this in Mark chapter 16, verses 15 through 20. If you're at home, turn to Mark chapter 16, verses 15 through 20. Let's read together. And he said to them, go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. But whoever does not believe will be condemned. Can you see that believing is important? You see why the enemy attacks your belief system? 
Whatever you believe in, guess what? You will serve. If you believe in just your own energy and your own strength, you'll just serve yourself. If you believe in God energy, you'll serve God and help others. Amen? 17th verse. And these signs, let's say it again, and these signs will accompany those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up serpents with their hands. And if they drink any deadly poison, it will not hurt them. They will lay their hands on the sick and they will recover. Let's just give the Lord a hand clap for that. What is saying that if you touch any deadly thing, guess what? Not that we're trying to go touch snakes, not that we're trying to drink poison, but if we do, God says, uh, you will recover, amen? If you lay hands, amen, that's something, that's the good news. That's the good news. 19 verse. So then, let's read together. So then the Lord Jesus, after he had spoken to them, was taken up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. And they went out and preached everywhere while the Lord worked with them and confirmed the message by accompanying signs. Let's look at the next one. Last slide. It's, for those that are home, you can go ahead and type in and on Facebook Live or on YouTube. Romans 8, chapter 9 through 10, the New Living's translation. Romans 8, verses 9 and 10. Romans 8, what, 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 what is it? Romans what? 8, verses 9 and 10. Let's go. And then we got Galatians chapter 4, verse 6. Let's read. But you are not controlled by your sinful nature. You are controlled by the Spirit. And if you have the Spirit of God living in you, and remember that those who do not have the Spirit of Christ living in them do not belong to Him at all. And Christ lives within you. So even though your body will die because of sin, the Spirit gives you life because you have been made right with God. Galatians chapter 4, verse 6, let's read that. And because we are his children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, prompting us to call out, Abba, Father. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father, right now, we just thank you for every person under the sound of my voice. We thank you for your presence that's here. Holy Spirit, Spirit of the living God, Howard sits down. I need you to stand up and speak like only you can. Bring clarity where there's been false teaching, Lord, let your truth come forth. Holy Spirit, you're one of the most, un, most misunderstood of the Godheads. Help us to respect you and give you the honor that you deserve. You are our teacher. You are our comforter. You are the lover, God, to our hearts and minds that guides us into all truth. God, we just need you right now. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O oh God. My strength, my redeemer, in Jesus' name. Come on, in Jesus' name. And in Jesus' name, amen and amen. You may be seated if you can, amen? Again, if you need to scan, if you just come in and you need to scan uh, the notes, I'm going to give you that one last time, take a picture of that. Holly, everybody have to raise your hands in the air if you got the notes. Wave your hands in the air and you wave them like you just don't care because you gave your burden to Jesus Christ. Everybody say, oh yeah. Okay, some of y'all thought I was going to say something else. Y'all about to be seen. Y'all about to get lost. Like, where are you going with this? Some of you been in your church all your life, you don't know what I'm talking about. Amen? That's a good thing. Amen. Amen. Now, everybody say strength for the journey. Say neighbor, turn to your neighbor, say neighbor. Oh, it's so good to see you today. Also, not everybody looking, everybody got to get eyes on somebody. This is not time, this is a live time. Turn to somebody, say neighbor. Hey, it's so good to see you. I mean, you look awesome today. I mean, the way you put those things together, I mean, just spectacular. Hey, Amen. you look, I mean, it, it, it's about to get lit up in here because you're here. 
Amen. Amen. Got to let you know, you may be strong, but you need God's strength for the journey. Now turn to somebody else. Turn to somebody else. Say, neighbor, you look awesome as well. I mean, you just put it together. You did that thing that you do when you do what you do. You did it. You're all that and a bag of chips. But I got to let you know, you need, you must have God's strength for the journey. Amen. Amen. As always, I'm going to give you one thing. Everybody say one thing. Just one thing that you got to learn. One thing. If you get this one thing, you've gotten the whole thing. Everybody say what? One thing. Here it is. Journey one is a commitment to the abundant life. This is our uh, membership class that we're going through. John 10 and 10, the thief does not to come to accept this. Come on, read that with me. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and destroy. I've come that you may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, if you didn't know, that's me. That's me. Say, neighbor, if you didn't know, that's you. Amen. So last week we talked about, who remembers what we talked about? Communion, the sacrament of communion, and the sacrament of what? What type of baptism? Water baptism. And this week we're going to talk about the baptism, the next two weeks, of the Holy Spirit. The baptism of the Holy Spirit. Amen? We're going to look for God to move and speak to us as we go through this and we learn about the Holy Spirit. Amen? God is good. Here we go. What is the baptism of the Holy Spirit? What is the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Well, we're going to learn about that today. Here we go. Every born-again Christian has the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Every the blank is indwelling. Amen? Indwelling of the Holy Spirit. It is the Spirit of God who brings souls to Jesus Christ. Every born-again believer has God's Spirit in him. Otherwise, he would not be born again. It is through the power of the Holy Spirit that we accept and live for Christ. So that gives us back to the story of Nicodemus. You know about the story of Nicodemus. I believe it's John chapter 3, Big John, the Gospel of John chapter 3. You have a, 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 a Pharisee, a teacher, a leader of leaders named Nicodemus. He comes to Jesus at night. He's seen him do miracles all day, but he comes at night. I call it Nick at night. Nicodemus, he comes at night when nobody's around because he's embarrassed of what he does not know and how much he does not know, even though he's a great teacher. And he says, Nick at night, he comes to Jesus and say, how much, how, how can I be born again? And God says, by my spirit. He says, can I enter into my mom's womb and come out? No. No, you're born of God's spirit. And he renews your spirit and gives you newness of life. Amen? Let's look at some scriptures on this. Let's look at some scriptures on this. Uh, Romans ch chapter 8, verses 9 through 10. But you are not controlled by your sinful nature. That's what happens when you change. You change sides. You change teams. You're on the team of darkness. We were on, let me say this, we were on the team of darkness before we got saved. And when we came into Christ, we came on the team of light. Amen? But you are not controlled by your sinful nature. You are controlled by the Spirit. If you have the Spirit of God living in you, and remember that those who do not have the Spirit, who we were of Christ, living in them, do not belong to Him at all. And Christ lives within you, so even though your body will die because of sin, the Spirit gives you life because you have been made right with God. That's why I'm not surprised when sinners act like sinners. Why? Because when I was a sinner, guess what I act like? A sinner. Because I didn't want to do right. I didn't want to see light. I wanted to live in darkness. And when people would turn the light on, we'd be like, oh, cut that light off. When somebody would get the light of truth on my, on my life and says, oh, you're being deceptive. No, I don't I want to stay deceptive. I want to lie on my time card. I want to lie on my taxes. Are y'all with me? 
But when you get the truth of God in your life, not only does it change you spiritual, but it affects every area of your life and how you deal with people on a day-to-day basis. Amen? Galatians 4 and 6 says, and because we are his children, turn to someone and say, I'm his child, baby. I'm his child. Oh, some of y'all didn't say it like you mean. Turn to somebody and say, I am his child. I am his child. I'm his child. That means Father God loves me. God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, prompting us to call him Abba, Father, which means our Father. In the prayer, Father, which is in heaven, hallowed be thy name. That's what we're saying, amen? So I have a little visual here so you can understand, just to put it in a little stronger, amen? When we're unsaved and empty, that was me, our spirit was dead. We're body, soul, and spirit. And your, your, your bodies, you're out of flesh. We're three-part beings like the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. God made us in His image. We're body, soul, and spirit. And our soul is our mind, our will, and our emotions. And our spirit, that's where we make our spirit. We were in darkness, so we were flow in dark decisions. We are oppressed, possessed by the enemy. You have, e- and I had, we had eternal damnation. But once we got saved, say, I got saved. Guess what? A surrender came. Amen? I became born again. My spirit became alive, and I became free. And guess what? Jesus Christ and the Spirit of God lives in me. Lives in me. Amen? Say first stage. Amen? But how many of say, God doesn't want you to stop this? Say, neighbor. Come on, turn and say, neighbor. You got to talk to him now. Say, neighbor. God don't want you to stop there. Amen? God wants, guess what? You to be alive and free and full of His fruit where it's evident. But then He wants you to get baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost. When you are filled with the Spirit of God and He has control over your life, guess what? Then the gifts are manifested in your life, the gifts of the Spirit. We'll talk a little bit about that next week. But mind we're talking about now. What is the baptism and why we need it? Amen? Let's keep going. Baptism with the Holy Spirit is a different experience from salvation. It's a different experience from salvation. Let's look at Acts chapter 19, verses 1 and 2. It shows you, it says, while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul took the road through the interior and arrived at Ephesus. There he found some disciples and asked them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? See that? He makes a distinction there. The answer, no. We have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. See, the disciples were saved but not baptized with the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. Baptism and the Holy Spirit and salvation are two different experiences. Let's look at Acts chapter 8, verses 12 through 17. It says, but when they believed... Philip, as he preached the good news of the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women, and Simon himself believed and was baptized. And he followed Philip everywhere, astonished by the great signs and miracles he saw. And when the apostles in Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them. And when they arrived, they prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit had not yet come upon any of them. They had simply been baptized into the name of the Lord Jesus. And then Peter and John placed their hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 8, verses 12 through 17. See, they received the Holy Spirit when Peter and John ministered them by the laying on of hands. Notice this in Acts 9 and 17. Amen. It says, then Ananias went to the house and entered to it, placing his hands on Saul, who later became Paul, who wrote a a huge part of the the New Testament, the epistles. He said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on the road as you were coming here has sent me so that you may see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen? See, one may be born again and not baptized, not be baptized with the Holy Spirit. In salvation experience, there is an impartation of a new spiritual life. But in baptism with the Holy Spirit, there's an impartation of new spiritual power. Amen. Have you ever noticed how some believers, 
after the, if they've gotten baptized with the Holy Spirit, and you may notice because if you haven't got baptized, they're just bold. They have a boldness. They don't care what people think. That's what the Holy Ghost does for you. When you want to be quiet, you can't be quiet because you've been filled with the Holy Spirit. When you want to sit down, you can't sit down. People say, just let it go. You can't let it go because you're filled with the Holy Ghost. Are y'all with me? Thirdly, third thing you want to know about the Holy Spirit, it is for all believers. Everybody say all. Not just a few. Not a select few. All. All believers. It's not for a chosen but for everyone who believes and thirsts for him. Now, Peter replied, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins. And guess what? And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. Understand this. Some Christians are robbed of this wonderful experience because they think it belongs to a special kind of people or denomination. Only, only, only Pentecostals do that. Only, only Baptists do that. Only certain people, ah, it's not for me. I, I don't know about you. I want every, I don't know, I've always been a greedy child. I want everything that God has for me. If the Father says it's for me, then it's for me. Amen. And if it's from the, from the Father and it's free and He freely gives it to me, I want it. Amen? I want to go deeper in Him. Amen? John chapter 7, verse 38 says this, Whoever believes in me, as the Scripture said, streams of living water will flow from within him. And by this he meant the Spirit whom those who believed in him were later to receive. Up to the, that time the Spirit had not been given since Jesus had not yet been glorified. Amen? We're almost done. Are y'all getting something out of this? Turn, turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, God's Spirit, the Holy Spirit, is for you. Amen. Amen. Fourthly, the baptism in the Holy Spirit means to be baptized in the power to serve. It gives you the power to serve. Amen. When I find myself getting weak in my service, I say, Lord, feel me. See, guess what? One baptism in the Spirit, but many feelings. Sometimes you find yourself getting empty. You find it becoming mundane. I have to say, Holy Spirit, feel me. When I start getting focused on myself and what people think about me, I have to say, Holy Spirit, feel me. Are y'all with me? When, I'm, when we're preparing the service and things start acting up, technology starts acting up, and things. We had one of our dear sister, Father just touched Sister Stella on her way in here today. She fell out on the pavement, so we had to rush her to the hospital. So the first part of the service, that's where I was. Amen. And I see things happening. I'm like, man, I'm like, Lord. I said, Lord, fill me with your spirit. We laid hands on her in the parking lot and got her in her car so Vanetta could take her. Amen. But she said, Mom, Vanetta, and Mom Stella, know that you're all in our prayers. Amen? Amen. So, Lord, fill me. We need God more than ever. We don't need flesh. You see enough flesh going on in the world. You see people doing things in the name of God that don't even look like God. You can't kill folk in the name of God. I don't care who you think you are. Whose people you think you are. Are y'all with me? Wrong is wrong. Are y'all with me? He can't he'd kill innocent children, innocent blood. The Bible says he hates the shedding of innocent blood. Now, I'm not talking about the crooks that's doing something that's breaking in your house. I'm talking about the folk that didn't do nothing. How I look if Howie breaks in my house and I go shoot William over here. That's crazy. Are y'all with me? <laughs> it's crazy. You prosecute the ones that did it, amen? How can you put somebody in a cage? Anyway. These are things we talked about in our leadership meeting. Back to the story, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We talked about justice and truth. And when you have justice and truth, then you have peace. But I really believe the reason why we have a lack of justice and truth, because we don't have the Holy Spirit. We got folks speaking in tongues, but they don't got the Holy Spirit. We got people doing fake miracles, but they don't got the Holy Ghost. We got folks shouting, but they don't have the Holy Spirit. 
Because when you have the Holy Spirit, he changes how you act toward your fellow man. He won't let you treat your husband or your wife wrong, even when you want to. I mean, I'm talking about. You want to be right? You be saying, oh, you know, I'm just going to let this go over. And the Holy Ghost say, go do something nice. I don't want to do nothing nice. Are y'all with me? Or when you're mad at your kids and you want to just let, because the Holy Ghost say, go give them a hug. I don't want to hug them right now. It made me mad. So some of y'all getting deep with me. Okay, let me go to this side. Amen. You know what I'm talking about, parents. When you buy on that last straw, the Holy Ghost will give you that energy to go the extra mile in your relationships. Acts 1 5. Let's look at this. One of my favorites. One of my favorites. It says this For John baptized with water, but not many days from now, you shall be baptized, placed in the Stamplified Version introduced into the Holy Spirit, but you shall receive power. Everybody say power. Now that word power is the word in the Greek called is dunamis. Sounds like the word dynamite. Everybody say dynamite. Back in the 70s, somebody was, dynamite! No, I'm talking about sticks of dynamite. Power. She all right. I'm fine with her. Amen. Hallelujah. Guess what? That power that came from dynamite, guess what? God's called us to have that same power. He's called us to walk in that power. And to me, not walking without the baptism of the Holy Spirit is like somebody, to me, I, I, only way I can describe it is when I got saved and they offered me the baptism of the Holy Spirit, it's like salvation was my gun, was my Holy Ghost gun. The Holy Spirit was my Holy Ghost cannon. I could blow up some things. A gun, I can defend myself. A cannon, I can defend my family. Are y'all with me? When I see the enemy coming in the long form, every, every man or woman of God that has a household needs to be able to defend their house with a Holy Ghost cannon. Amen? And so when I see in the Spirit, when I find arguments trying to happen between me and my spouse, or between me and my children, I can step back in the spirit and begin to take authority of those demons. Are y'all with me? With boldness. Are y'all with me? Because I have the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm going to say that though, for I got the Holy Ghost. Amen. And so I have him. So I know how to fight. I'm not scared. I run to the battle. I'm not trying to run away and, and bail out because I got the Holy Spirit. Are y'all with me? I really believe less people will bail out of marriages and relationships if they had the ghosts. Because most of the time when we're tired, we're just empty. Y'all didn't hear me. Amen, light bulb. That, Pastor, that was good teaching. I'm sorry. I, I just got beside myself, and I had to give myself a pat on the back because that, that was the Holy Ghost. You just empty? We just get empty sometimes. Because as vessels, we leak. And that's why the Bible says, one baptism, but many feelings. That's when you have to, when you get weak, say, God, I need you. I need your eyes to see my partner with empathy, to see them the way you see them, not how I see them right now, because right now, I'm done. But I want to see them the way you see them, because then I might see that they're going through something that's bigger than me. And then I might see that we're going through something that's bigger than us. God, help us. Help us to see each other through your eyes. Oh, the world would be a better place if we just could see through, guess what, God's eyes. Amen? Let's keep going. Let's keep going. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is mainly to equip the believers to do the work of God that has nothing to do with holiness or the character, but ministry. That's why people can be flowing in the gifts and be living this type of way, because it's a gift. It's a gift. And the gift speaks of the giver, not of the person. Are you with me? I mean, the fact that I can preach, guess what? It's a gift that God gave me, to be able to articulate my words and put them together, and, and guess what? And to overcome my fear, because me in the natural, I'm a shy introvert. 
but something comes when I'm preaching the gospel and I get before people, the Holy Ghost rises up and I become a bold believer. Are y'all with me? People say, well, that's, the, I, that's just not, well, this ain't me. But when you get the Holy Ghost, you just can't be you anymore. You can't settle. It becomes supernatural. See, the Holy Spirit will help make God's Word real. It will begin to open the Word of God up to you. He will begin to open up. Let me say it. He. Amen. It helps to bring about a radical transformation in the life of the believer. It will transform you from the inside out. So many times we're trying to clean people from the outside in. Wear this, wear that. Wear this skirt, wear this dress. Men, wear this. Are y'all with me? That's all outward. God always works from the inside out. That's when you know you're you're entertaining religion. Because religion will always try to work from the outside in. But true relationship from God always works from the inside out. And someday, you guess what? One day you put on that tight shirt, you'll be like, I can't do this. Something ain't right. Nobody told you, just, mm, just don't, don't feel right. Are you with me? You get ready to smoke that cigarette, and you'll be like, ah, I don't want to do this no more. Are y'all with me? For me, I was listening to secular music, and I was like, oh, I just don't want to thank you for that. I don't want to do that anymore. Amen? Something happens on the inside. See, it helps to bring about an impartation of supernatural power. It says supernatural. You need power for this walk. Amen? Because life is coming at you continually, and everything that's being marketed on TV, on social media, and and this programming is saying you are not enough. Everything from soap to iPhones. New 15 now. Oh, you need that. The 14 just came out. They got the new iPads out now with better camera. So if you need to get rid of this one and get the new one, you're not enough. Remember when we used to keep appliances for years? Some of you got to think about my older people in the house. I mean, know what I'm talking about. Keep a washing machine. Remember washing machine used to last 20 years, 30 years, not five and 10 like it does now. Remember refrigerators? I used to go back to my grandma's house. She had the same refrigerator that she had when I was like five. Because sometimes it could last 30 to 40 years. Things were built to last. We've gotten wise, smarter, but dumber. We've gotten smarter, but dumber. Who can stand up and give me 10 telephone numbers that you memorized without looking at your phone? I didn't say your phone is smarter, but you ain't. Remember when we, I used to know about 60 numbers? Because we've gotten smarter, but dumber. We need the Holy Ghost. Why do you, why, why you point out all these, these, these things? Because guess what? The Holy Spirit will give you wisdom beyond your years. The Holy Spirit will show you the trend that you need to go through that's opposite of what the world is doing. And the Holy Spirit will give you the insight on why you need to do it. So you're not just following the crowd. Amen? You're doing it because you literally see where God is taking you. Amen? It's like investing. Everybody else is spending their money. They're like I, I tell my kids, invest the money. They're at, at, at Nike and Home Depot, buy the stock. Buy the stock. Buy the stock. Buy the stock. You're living at home, buy the stock. Amen? Why? So guess what? You can be a millionaire by age 30, 35. Are y'all with me? God will give you wisdom. You can wear it all on your, on your shoes and clothes and have all the latest stuff, or you can put it store up for your future and start build, working on your legacy at 16 and 17 and 18. Are y'all with me? Wisdom. God will give you this. He'll give you the discipline. Amen? And he'll give you the ability to do this. Ah, oh, there's so much. I've got to wrap it up. He opens the doors. The Holy Spirit opens the doors for the gifts of the Holy Spirit. What are some of the gifts of the Holy Spirit? Word of wisdom, word of knowledge, speaking in tongues, interpretation of tongues, miracles, prophecy. What else? Intercessory prayer, service. Everybody say service. We need more people filled with the Holy Ghost because people don't like to serve. 
See, I came out, I was talking to another pastor, I came out of the airway, it was just a privilege to serve in the house of God. You wanted your kids to serve. You wanted your adults, you wanted to serve. You ain't trying to run to the bar. You just wanted, because you understood that when you helped in God's house, you were touching God himself. But we've made church about entertainment now. So even when the children comes, where's the children's church? Where's my entertainment? I can't listen to the Word. Oh, my God, what's going to happen if I have to listen to the Word? If I have to actually listen to something and learn. Much of our school systems have become entertainment. They're not even learning anything. We're in the 20th to 30th range now. When I was growing up, we were in the top three in everything. We got third world countries ahead of us. Anyway, everybody said we need the Holy Ghost. I really believe that God gives his people a greater discernment. He gives us, he pushes us ahead. Amen? Because he, he gets the glory out of that. It brings about a special kind of boldness. It helps us in our prayer life. How many need help in their prayer life? How many the Holy Ghost will wake you up when you want, when you're trying to go to sleep? <laughs> How many have experienced that before? Holy Ghost will wake you up. You'll be sleeping real good, and he'll shake you and say, get up and pray. And you try to go back to sleep, and he'll shake you again. I'm not talking about no cell phone. I'm talking about the Holy Ghost. It ain't no shake like the Holy Ghost shake. Amen? If you go back for me, please. Amen? And your prayer life. Go back one for me, please. Hallelujah. And also what? And witnessing to others. Witnessing. How many want to be a bold witness for God? How many struggle with witnessing to God? You don't have to raise your hand. Well, okay. okay. You need to be filled with the Holy Spirit because he'll open up the doors. For me, it was like always like, Lord, just open up a door. Open the door. It's almost like, it's almost like double dutching. You're just like, I'm from New York. You just see the girl. Kids, like the double dutch, you just got to jump in. If you miss your time of jumping in, you got to, God opens that door, you got to jump in and take it. And guess what? And then it's just a rhythm, boom, boom. You just, you in there. Are you with me? The biggest thing is overcoming the fear. The Holy Ghost gives you the power to overcome the fear. Amen? Now the Lord, consider their threats. This is the, this is the disciples praying after they were threatened by, by the, by the, <laughs> The Sanhedrin and the Pharisees and Sadducees says, stop preaching his name. Don't preach his name again or we're going to kill you. This is what they prayed. Now, Lord, consider their threats. Now, they just got filled with the Holy Ghost in Acts chapter 2. But they start leaking because guess what? World will make you, the world has a way of making you leak. And he says, consider your threats and enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. And after they prayed... The place where they were meeting was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly with great power. The apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, and much grace was upon them all. Acts 4, 29 and 31. Amen? Hallelujah. We need the Holy Spirit. Next week, we're going to be talking about how to receive the Holy Spirit in our lives. Hey, it's simply by just asking them to come in, and we're going to make it, leave an opportunity where we can lay hands and pray for you. How many are, are, have been baptized with the Holy Spirit? Raise your hand if you've been baptized with the Holy Spirit. Okay, amen. So there's enough, enough, enough of us in here for those that, how many desire to have the Holy Spirit? Amen, amen. So be here next week. And guess what? If we need to pray for you after service, Praise God, we'll pray for you after service. We're running out of time. Amen? It's communion. Ah, let's pray before we do this. And Father, I just thank you right now for, the, for your spirit, for the baptism of your spirit, God. And I just pray right now that you touch each and every person in this place if you're here and you say, Lord, I need, I need you to baptize me and I need to be filled, just raise your hand. Hallelujah. Now let's just lift both hands up to him right where you are. Hallelujah. Say, Holy Spirit, fill me right now with your presence. Let me do this for those that may. Everybody repeat this and say, Dear Lord, come into my life. I receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, and now
Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Fill me with your power. Fill me with your anointing. Be my guide. Be my teacher. Be my friend. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Give God some praise. Amen. <laughs> Do me one more thing for me. If you're interested in being baptized with the Holy Spirit, raise your hand again. Raise your hand. Okay, I got you. Got you. Got you. Okay. Got you. I got you. I have a, a few hands, so I'm going Men, we're going to minister that a little bit later, okay? Right now, we're going to get into our communion. And, 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 and if you pray that prayer, you've received it, but we're going to be praying to lay the hands on you next week, amen? And we'll lay hands on you after service, too. We got to make sure we clear out. I'm trying to make sure I'm not infringing on our next service in here. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. 23 and 25, we talked about communion last week, the importance of making sure you're right with your family. So I want you to do this. If you can just check in with people in your family and just make sure you're all right before we take this. Lady T, if you can come on up here, we can talk. Man, can you just check in real quick? Is everybody, is your heart right? And if you need to release somebody, I'm going to say a prayer of release, where you, of forgiveness, where we forgive one another. And it's so important because, you know, even in, in church, I'm, you know, uh, on the way to church, we can get in huge arguments and stuff like that. We straight? Okay. She said we are. So come on up here, girl. You looking pretty? I'm going to let you go. <laughs> just went through that door. Amen. She's looking through that. And just she has to handle something else. Amen. We straight? Yeah. So everybody, are y'all straight? Son, are we straight? Okay, are we straight back there? Son, daughters? Okay. Amen. Well, 1 Corinthians 11, thank you for that, sweetie. You got to go handle what you got to handle. Amen. I receive from the Lord that which also delivered to you that the Lord Jesus in the night in which he was betrayed took the bread. And you can come on and down. Actually, let me go ahead and let y'all take this. Come on down and get... Uh, get some of the, get, come on down to the Lord's table. We already prayed over it. Quickly, quickly. Take it. Take a cup and let's go. Hope you have enough. Thank you. Come on, come on, come on. Don't stop, don't stop. Don't stop till you get enough. One and go. One and go. If you walk and circle back this way, and if you came this way, you circle back that way. Very good. We gonna do it. Let the, the young lady come. Oh, there's none on that side, is it? I'm sorry about that. Let me do this. And that way y'all can make y'all turn quicker. I was like, why is that? Let's just take one. Baby, come on back. Come back. Come back, Court, baby. Come back, Court. Because I don't want you to spill it. We, can, we can't spill it on this carpet. We'll be up. Get one. Everybody got communion? Okay. Come on, I said they got two or three just to make sure. <laughs> they want to have all of God's body. Let me, let me. All of it. Amen. Here we go. First Corinthians eleven twenty two through twenty five. Come on, baby, get your communion. You came just in time, sweetie. I receive. Here you go. I got one for you. I receive from the Lord that which I also delivered to you that the Lord Jesus, in the night which he was betrayed, he took the bread, and when he had given thanks, Lord, we thank you for it. He broke it. And he said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. By eat it, all of you. And in the same way, he took his cup along after the supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant of my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. 
to see who God's healing right now. Hallelujah, God. God, we just thank you, Lord, for your holy communion, God, and that we're part of your family. We put you back together, and we realize, God, that you're taking us, you're blessing us, you're breaking us, and you're giving us back to a dying world, God, so they may eat of our lives as we partake in eating of yours. We thank you for it in advance. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen and amen.